All right, guys. Welcome back to Quick Books. So, yesterday we got to look at the introduction to how Quick Books is right. Understanding the formatting of Quick Books, understanding the layout, understanding um, why we use Quick Books, and how the there's, there's different versions of Quick Books and what files that go with Quick Books. So, in this case, right. Today, we're just only creating our company file. Uh, we will take a look at a sample file later, later on in the book. But for this part, um, is going to be how we actually create that company file in the first place. Right? So as I mentioned before, right, in order for you to use QuickBooks, you need to create the company file in the first place. So... It's very similar to when you open up a document, right? Usually it's a brand new document. It's blank. There's no content. You have to type everything in. This is more so the same thing. Um, the only difference is that it's not easily accessible as you think, right? So in this case, right, in order to be able to use the functions of QuickBooks, be able to uh, be able to use the banking system, entering your bills, or any of that stuff, you need to create a company file. Now, there are two th there are two ways to create a company file, and that is um, through either one, the easy step interview, or two, which is also known as the detailed start, or two, the express start, okay? Um, and we'll go through that in a few seconds, in a few minutes, but in this case, right, they always recommend you is to is to establish a start date now usually the start date right is always recommended to do um the last day of your physical uh, physical year okay so for calendar year best recommended date is going to be december 31st of um the previous year Right. If you're doing a uh, fiscal year where you start your fiscal year starting um, July 1st, then your best date is going to be June 30th of the previous year. Now, that's just general context and that's just general information because in this case, right, they want you to make sure that when you do these, right, if you guys remember, calendar year versus fiscal year is based on when you file your taxes, right? Fiscal year, you usually start at uh, July 1st and you end June 30th. Um, and that's because during the summer, it's a lot more easier to wrap up the, um, the, the year because it's less busy. But if it's, if you're starting from January 1st, all the way to December 31st, then most likely you're less busy during the winter to file your taxes. So that's what, uh, um, the, determination of what a start date should be but if you're starting your company for the very 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 first time then you can choose whatever month you want to start with you don't have to necessarily start on january 31st and plug all your numbers in if you're going to open your store in august no you can go ahead and uh, start your business as of July 31st, okay? It's always going to be the pr the last day of the previous month or the last day of the last um, of the fiscal year or calendar year, however you want to do it. Last day, okay? Reason being is because if you're going to start directly on the 1st, you could definitely cause a lot of discrepancies, a lot of problems that can go on with this because it's it's saying that when you start on the first, it's measuring the second all the way to the rest of the day of the year. You want to also cover that last date or that very, very beginning date. So that is why they recommend you to use the last day of either the fiscal year or the last day of the last previous month. Okay, and depending on how often you close your books out, so we'll talk about that in chapter um, 14 um, and uh, where we um, go through the whole process and at the end of the given accounting period, depending on how often you want to close your books out, 
then that's going to be determined on when you actually start your actual company file. Okay. Now, in this case, I can start at my company file any date that I please. All right. So, um, but in this case, um, we're just going to follow the book. Okay. So that's only an exception if you are starting your company at a, ran at a random uh, month of the year. But if you are a pre-existing company and you're just starting to use QuickBooks, but you've been around for quite some time, then yes, they do recommend you to go all the way back and start from um, either your, your, the date of your calendar year or the date of your fiscal year. So that's just a recommendation so you can produce more accurate information, okay? But the rule for new businesses that just start randomly in the year, you can start whenever you'd like, just as long as it's the last day of the previous month because they want to make sure that they get a, um, a more accurate measurement if you start on exactly the first of the month, okay? That's just a little tip um, and uh, food for thought right there. So, of course, before anything you could before starting anything, it is very, very crucial that you have these 12 steps before setting up a company file. So page 446 is here. Now, of course, um, if you look at this, let me see. Number one is to create a starting date, right? That's the very first thing we just talked about. So that is Definitely, you need to have um, determine what your start date is, okay? Whether it's fiscal year, calendar year, or if you're just starting your new business um, in August, you got the point. Then number two says you're going to create a QuickBooks company file. So that's what we're going to do um, uh, in a few seconds here. And then step three says create a chart of accounts. And that's exactly what we're going to do, right? In order to start accounting, in general, you need to have a list of a chart of accounts in order for you to be able to organize your ideas, your thoughts, and your um, transactions. However, here's a rule about creating your chart of accounts. Creating your chart of accounts isn't something that you create and uh, cre be able to create every single account and then go ahead and proceed. No, it is an ongoing change, right? You're constantly going to be having new expenses, new income. You might be even having new assets, right? So those kind of things, you want to make sure that the chart of accounts, all you need is your basics, which is your checking account, right? Um, your sales account, your basic expenses like revenue, like uh, rent, um, your, your utilities expense, any liabilities such as accounts payable, those are standard accounts that you should have at all times, right? Everything else, because again, the, the expenses expand over time because you may not need this expense this month, but next month you might need that expense. So you're going to be constantly creating as the chart of accounts as you go. But in this case, we just need to be able to be able to understand how to set up a generic chart of accounts and be able to um, go in and try to do as many transactions until you come across a transaction where you don't have an account, right? Then step four says entering your open balances, okay? Uh, for those balances um, sheet, okay? Now again, this is for pre-existing companies, okay? But for most cases, if you are a fresh start company, you're going to be skipping steps 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. You're basically only going to go up to step uh, step 3, okay? Especially if you're a new business, right? But if you are a pre-existing business, then that's why step 4 through 12 is necessary steps because you need to enter in your opening balances, meaning what did you actually begin the, um, the accounting period with? What was your up-to-date for payroll? What was your inventory, okay? Um, what was your sales tax, okay? Et cetera, et cetera. Now, of course, in this class, since we're going to be creating a company file, 
we're only going to go up to step three. But at the same time, step four is going to be something that we learn in chapter 14. Uh, because we that's where we figure out how we find our balance sheet. Step five, where we... Uh, where we uh, look for outstanding transactions, okay, from the start date. So, again, that could be anywhere from chapters 2, 4, even, um, even 3, okay? Number 6 says, um, if needed, enter your year-to-date income. Income and expenses, okay, so income is definitely going to be chapter 2 and 3, chapter... Four is your in, is your expenses, okay? Um, chapter seven says sales tax uh, payable. That is going to be chapter four. Eight is going to be adjusting inventory, which is chapter eight. And then payroll, which is chapter 10 and 11, okay? And verifying that the trial balance is going to be chapter 14. And closing um, the, uh, the opening balances, you already, um, is also going to be chapter 14, and chapter 14 is going to be step 12, where you set your closing date. So all of these things right here is something we're going to be learning throughout the rest of the course. So for now, we're only going to be focusing on the first three, because as a company, and we're creating a company that do, that we know that we don't have a pre-existing information for, I'm not going to show you all of this because, again, these are steps that we're going to learn throughout the rest of the week. Okay, this is chapters 2 through 14. Okay. So that means we're only going to focus on the first three. All right. So once we have our start date and once we have um, and we have our items ready to go. So here's something that I think should be a step zero. Okay. Before you even create or even place information into your um or create your company file, I think it's best that you have your business plan with you, okay? Because it will start asking you questions that you need to have prior before creating a company file. Because when you, when you are asked to create your company file, you're going to be asked a series of questions such as, what is your address? What state are you doing services? What kind of business are you? What kind of business organization? What do you sell? Do you sell inventory? Do you have employees? Right? Do you charge sales tax? Right? All of those are questions that you need to figure out before even creating a company file. Okay? And, of course, the book gives you all the information, so we're okay there, but... For many cases, right, if you're just going to start a company file randomly and you don't have all the information, you will be sitting there for hours trying to plug everything in. So step zero is a recommendation that you should have a bus your business plan. You should have your business license because that will tell you a lot of information, right? It will tell you what your identif I employer identification number is. It will tell you... Um, it will also tell you the, your legitimate legal name of your company and so on and so forth. Okay, so those things is going to be step zero is your business plan of all the information that's about your company, your business license, and etc. Okay, so again, that is going to be step zero. But be, since we already have the information uh, already, we can go ahead and proceed to actually setting up our company file. Okay, so again, there are two ways to create a company file. The first one's called Express Start, okay? Now, Express Start, I will show you how to do it at the end of today as well, um, that the Express Start is the most easiest um, way of creating a company file. When you, do, when you use the Express Start, you should be definitely a avid user of QuickBooks because when we go through the interview, I'll tell you, I'll, it, it will make more sense as we uh, go through the interview and what are the materials you need in order to use the Express Start. The Express Start is, is narrowed down to only one page of content that you need to fill out, which is your business name, what kind of business you are, 
what what um like like what kind of company are you like are you a corporation a sole proprietor um what what do you sell what what kind of business are you in so industry and your address and contact information and that's it that's it and then when you go ahead and click next it creates the file for you and all you have to do is start setting up everything manually okay so again the the express start is only limited information and what you are going to be doing is you will be setting up the preferences as well as the profile itself on your own okay and if you're not an avid user of quickbooks and you have no idea how to set up your book your um, company file then the best recommendation is to use the detailed start Okay, so again, we'll revisit the express start um, after at the very end of class. So you guys or not the end of class, but at the end of completing our company file. And I'll show you the huge difference between them. Right. Okay. All right. So then the next thing that we're going to be that the one that I recommend for beginner users is to be using the detailed start. Okay. The detailed start gives you, makes you go through a series of questions. And as you go through the series of questions, it helps manual, it actually automatically um, sets up your uh, preferences as well as create your company file. Okay. A lot of this is really easy, right? It's either yes or no questions. So if you charge sales tax, yes, then it will create the sales tax for you, creating your liability sales tax payable account it will create all that stuff for you okay if you have employees it will create an employee section for you that allows you to keep track of your employees as well as um, be able to pay pay the employees pay liabilities and file forms okay so that's what's really um really uh unique or I guess best if you go through the detailed start. Now, of course, if you are an avid user and instead of having to go through all of um, those things by yourself or have to manually set those preferences by yourself, then the easy step interview should be quite easy. Um, the, so detailed start is also known as the easy step interview. Okay, they're both used interchangeably, interchangeably but it's most widely known as the easy step interview just because it's true. It's an easy step interview that allows you to help you set up your company file as well as set preferences so you can go ahead and get started right away once you create your company file. Okay. So again, beginner users is recommended to use the easy step interview. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Now, um, I do need to borrow your eyes. So I know this content is very, very, very tiny. And unfortunately, um, these this is, this is what the scan looks like. So um, if you could try to help me as much as possible, I'll try to help you as possible um, from uh, previous uh, lessons that we've had before. Okay. All right. All right. So let's introduce you to QuickBooks. So this is what the program looks like when you open it at first, right? You get this gray screen and it stops you here because you need to be able to do these two, these, this thing right here where you have to either select to open or restore an existing working data file or a portable file or backup file, or you have to create a company file, okay? So in this case, because we're starting from square one, we're gonna go ahead and create a company file. Now your screen might look a little different depending on which um, program you have here. Um, if you have this, the free um, trial for the pro, um, this bottom section is gonna look different. It's gonna say advanced settings where in this case, mine actually says detailed start, okay? So if you are going to um, be using the student free trial, it should be detailed start, okay? Now, of course, they ask you what 
are you going to create this company file for? Are you doing it for personal? Or are you going to do it for someone else? In this case, that's the question you have to ask yourself. Are you the accountant? If you are the accountant, then you are creating it for someone else. But if you're doing it for personal, right, or uh, for just for uh, being the admin itself, then you would do it for myself. Okay, so that's the thing too. So um, it depends on who your company that you're working for. In most cases, um, I normally just go ahead and click on for myself. Okay, because you don't want to create for someone else because you then you won't have the access to be um, to modify or change anything. Okay, so when you're creating the company file. You are admin, meaning you can manipulate QuickBooks, you can change preferences, you can do a lot of things, right? And at the end of this chapter, we'll take a look at how to create users, okay? All right, so here you go. I do click for myself, and um, because I want to use the detailed start, right, I'm going to go ahead and click detailed start down here on the right below. If you click on this blue button where it says start setup, that's the express start right there, okay? So make sure you know the difference. Blue is the express start. The uh, detail start should be another separate button at the bottom of the page here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on detailed start. So first page right here, now you're gonna notice this. This little bar right here basically tells you your progress as you go through the interview. Yes, you can leave at any given time, um, and they will burn you back here. However, it's best recommended that you go through the whole entire interview and don't stop in the middle, okay? Especially uh, because uh, sometimes uh, QuickBooks might not remember or the way that you format it might not recognize or remember all the content that you put in previously. So it might get deleted at the end of the day. So it's best to just go ahead and go through it, through it once, okay? So company name. Now, the company name, this very first line right here, is going to be the same thing as your file name, okay? What you want to see on the actual file, okay? So in this one, I can use whatever I'd like as long as I can recognize what this file is, right? I could say this is my company. This is Bob's company. This is... Um, this is uh, Linda's company, right? So with that being said, this is basically this is basically going to be determined as your uh, as the file name, okay? Not the actual legitimate company name. You can use your legitimate company name as your file name so it's easier to find because again, um, if this isn't the only file that you're going to be having, then yes, you should make some kind of uh, reference point so you know exactly what file that you're working on, okay? So in this case, I believe it is called Imagine Photography, Photography. Question. Yes. Um, could that be company name? Could be that like uh, Bob Mason, and then the legal name could be Coffee Cafe. Yes, that is absolutely correct. That's what I was gonna get to right now. Oh, so your legal, you. yes. So remember, this is your file name that you want to see on your computer. Okay, that's the company name. But your legal name is going to be the name that is printed on your business license. The, this one has to be your legitimate name because, once again, this program, right, which once we get to the tax ID number, this program, QuickBooks, is actually meant not just for to keep track of your expenses and your um, income or keep track of whatever it is that you need to keep track of. It's actually 100% meant to help you file taxes much more easier. So you definitely need to have a lot of information in there that is considered sensible, such as your tax ID number, all right? You're going to be holding a lot of social security numbers in here, a lot of personal phone numbers and contacts and addresses. So 
with that being said, right, it's just so then when you submit this to the IRS, right, but if you just submit a QuickBooks um, file to them, they are able to extract all the information they need to file for taxes. So that's the main purpose of QuickBooks. And that is why, you know, Intuit also created TurboTax to make it that much more easier to file taxes. Okay. So again, you need to have your legal name, which is going to be the name that's going to be written on your actual business license. Okay. You need to have a business license in order to create a company file or at least a legitimate one. Okay. But if you're doing this for personal, you actually don't even need an address. You don't need any of this information because this is optional. Okay. The only thing that's actually required of you is to make sure that you have um, the actual company name or the file name in this case. Right. So again, you can use QuickBooks for your to keep track of your own personal expenses and, and whatever you need to do. However, we're looking at as if we're using it for an actual company, which is primarily that's what you normally would use QuickBooks for. You wouldn't use it more for personal. You definitely use it more for um, a company. Okay. So the legal name is going to be whatever's written on your actual um, business license. Okay. So in this case, it's going to be Imagine Photography Incorporated. Okay. Now a tax ID. Okay, so now that I skipped forward to tax ID, right? This is so then, right? An employer tax ID number. So when you start um, having employees, right? That's the perfect number to, uh, to use um, to keep track of all the liabilities that you collect for having employees, right? This also goes along the lines of when you have to collect state tax, right? You need to have some kind of employer identification number so you could properly, first one, identify that you are the company. But second of all, it's the way that um, the IRS is able to determine that this is you and this is the taxes that you owe me, right? It's the same thing as a social securities number except... Um, a little different, right? It's the same nine digits, except the way that it's organized, it's two digits, then it's seven digits. Where social security is um, three, three, and then four. Okay? Or I, no, yes, three, three, and four. Three, two, <laughs> it's three, two, and then four, excuse me. All right? So um, again, if you are a sole proprietor and you haven't applied for an employer identification number, then yes, you can use your social security number. However, like, like um, when we learn in accounting, right, it's best recommended to file taxes as two separate individuals, right? One as a company and then one as your personal taxes, right? We learned that as the business and economic um, entity um, assumption where it's best to keep your personal and your business separate. So this is a perfect example that you should, as a sole proprietor, apply for a separate business identification number. Even as an independent contractor, you can apply for your own um, employee identification number. However, when you apply for a job, you must use your social security number. Okay. That's just a little um, fun fact there. So in this case, I believe it's 11-2345. One, one that might be wrong. I think it's 34. 34567. Four, Should be like that, right? 12345678. One, one, okay? So it goes two digits and then it goes the rest of the seven digits. That's how you tell the difference between an individual and a business is that the employer identification number goes two, then seven. Okay. This is not required if you're not if you have no intentions of using QuickBooks to file taxes for you. In this example here, they just recommend it so that it's easier to one distribute, collect the tax, and be able to um, when you file for the federal um, taxes 
it's it, you could easily pull this information automatically. Okay. Now the street address should be one two three Main Street. Okay. In the city of Pleasantville. Pleasantville, California. Okay. Zip code. Can someone tell me what the zip code is? I think it's like nine. I think it's nine four five six six. We're in this zero eight two zero one. Zero eight two one. Two zero one zero eight two zero one. Might not even be California though. Okay, nine four five six six. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, just making sure. Okay, because that that should be okay. Now here's one thing that is going to come into a problem with you. In this case, is since it's using the internet, it's actually looking for a legitimate address. So you can't be adding fake addresses, and you can't be like saying this is Las Vegas, uh, Nevada, and you put a completely separate, different zip code. It will not allow you to move on because. In this case, you need to have a legitimate address for it to actually move on. So in this case, if you are doing your fictitious business, um, it's up to you. You don't need to have an address. Reminder, okay? You don't need to have an address to fill this in. But if you do, it has to be a legitimate address, like an actual functioning address. Phone number. It's too blurry. I can't see it. Is it? I, I, yeah. I think it's 925555. I think it's, it's just like, it's just made I'm, up numbers. I, I can see 510555121212. I think that's right. 510555. 5112, yeah. 1212, perfect. Okay. Um, email address should be imagine photo dot info okay. or in this case I'm sorry it should be info at imagine photo dot info okay. and of course the web address is going to be www www dot imagine photo Dot info. Okay. You're not required to have a, a, an email address either. Okay. And correct this zip code. Because I actually pulled it out of the USPS, but on the printout it says 94123. Okay. All right. So once again, that was just the first content or the first page. You don't need a fax number again. If it, it, you don't need a fax number. Um, so once you've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and click next. So now it's gonna ask you another series of questions, right? And this one is going to be determining what kind of industry you belong to. So if you guys remember, right? Premier and Enterprise is can, or can provide you industry specific information which we talked about the six industries right in this case it breaks it down even further to what exact category do you belong to right so if you're a restaurant you're going to be under restaurant service and restaurant if you are um, a retail store sales is going to be your um, going to be uh, yours right there um, are you a legal service are you are you a design architect, right? They break it down to the point where 
um, it tells you exactly what kind of um, industry you belong into. So in this case, we belong to art, writing, and photography because that is what Imagine Photography does. It is a pretty much a photography, right? It's a, it's a service that is provided where we take pictures and for our clients and they buy packages from us, okay? So in this case, um, for this example, I'm gonna use art, writing, and photography, okay? Click next. Now here's the next question where it says, what kind of business entity are you? Or what kind of business organization, okay? So this is where, if you look in gray, it kind of gives you a small description of what you are. Now, of course, if you have your business license, it should, you should automatically know, because it's written on there, what kind of business you are. But if you are in the process of creating your business, then, you, then you're gonna have to kind of figure out on your own what kind of business would you feel most comfortable with? Most mom and pop shops or most startup companies are always gonna start out usually as either a sole proprietor partnership or an LLC, right? Corporations take long to get to, right? Because you the one thing about corporations is you need someone to invest in you. You need people to invest in you, not just one. You need a whole bunch of people who um who like you or who like your brand, your company, and want to invest in you. So this one takes a long time to establish. However, if you are a small business owner and you're a, um, you're a startup company, you definitely would fall under the three categories of a sole proprietor, partnership, or an LLC. Um, and make sure that you know the difference between an S corp and a C corp, okay? Um, the difference is uh, basically how you file your taxes, okay? And again, you could do it for nonprofits as well, or you could choose another type of organization. In this case, I'm going to say I am a, a, I think I was supposed to be an S Corp. Okay. Next. Right, because we're incorporated. So here, the next question asks here, okay, select the first month of your fiscal year. So in this case, right, this is where it's going to task you, when is your fiscal year, okay? In this case, right, we're going to say it's going to be January, okay? This isn't the start date. This is just establishing when do you file taxes, okay? In this case, I file taxes based on a calendar year. So the first month of my fiscal year is going to be starting as of January, okay? So, right? And I'm going to click next. So the next question here says that you're going to be setting up your administrative password. Okay. In this case, the book recommends you to skip this part. And I actually recommend you to also skip this part too. Because in this case, right, you definitely don't want to set a password while you're doing your interview because you'll be gathering a lot of information. You might forget it, lose it, write it down, and then throw it away by accident. And you definitely don't want that because once you lock your file, right? And if you lose your password, you can't, uh, you can't reset it. You have to go through into it to reset it for you, all right? So that's the one that you have to make sure that you are very careful with that you don't want to uh, mess with because if you lock yourself out and you can't get a hold of into it, then unfortunately you would have to start everything all over again and create a new, a new file, which once again, already that was the first five steps. That's we're not even halfway done. Look at our bar right here. Our progress, we're not even a quarter done through the interview. So it's a lot of information. So what they do is they recommend you to skip it. Now, Here's, here's, here's something that you should know as well. If you skip this section right here, right, and you continue to work on your file, your company file, create preferences, create, set it up, whatever it is that you need to do, right? When you close that file or close the program and you decide to open it back up, it's going to pop up a, an error message saying that you have to set a password now, okay? So, and in that case, if you have to, right, 
we just put in sensible data into our QuickBooks file, right? We just entered in a um, employee identification number or a tax ID number, right? That is sensible data because that is basically determines that this is your business, right? Anybody can steal anything from there, and especially when we dive into looking at vendors or looking in at um, chapter two, which is customers, where we start collecting information and credit card information, then yes, you are obligated to create a password no matter what. You can't go around it. You can't do a passwordless company file because of how sensible and how uh, much information you put in a QuickBooks file that it could cause um, a lot of problems in the future, okay? So that's why your number one rule here is that always set a password either before you close the thing or once you close it, it's going to require you to set a password no matter what. It will not let you continue. You have to set a password. But in this case, we can go ahead and skip it because at the end of this, um, of this chapter, I will show you how to set your password. So I could go ahead and skip for now. So then it says right here that we're going to be creating the company file. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. And it's going to ask me, well, first off, where do you want to save this file? And when I create my company file, in this case, right, I want to save it into a document. Now, in this case, um, number one rule here is that Oftentimes, when you are using QuickBooks and you're trying to save a file, it's automatically going to try to save it into the local C drive. Now, if you are the owner of the computer, you can have access to it. But if you're not the owner of the computer, let's say you're working in an office, right, you will not have access to it, right? There's only one person that has access to the C drive, and that's usually um, whoever the tech person is on um, in that office. So in this case, you have to either create another folder or, for example, I've already created a folder for you guys. It's going to be under LVP to Accounting QuickBooks, and it's going to be under um, QuickBooks Portable Files, and I made a folder for your class, which is the, Quick, the AM QuickBooks September 7, and I'm going to save it here. Now, if you guys remember, right, my company name. Look right here in the file name is my is whatever I typed in there. Once again, you can modify this too and say it's my company, Bob's company, Joanne's company, right? You could change it here. But in this case, I'm not going to change it. I'm going to leave it because it just says right there, imagine photography. That's good enough. At least I'm able to recognize that this is this company file. And I'm going to click save. Okay. So here you're going to get this green bar here. And what it's doing is it's actually creating the actual working data file for you. Okay. Okay. Once again, you absolutely need to have internet in order for you to run QuickBooks. So my internet is a little slow, but I do see my... Uh, QuickBooks recognizing and closing all my windows. Okay, there you go. And then you'll get this uh, message here saying, congratulations, your company file has been set up. Now the next step we have here is to set up preferences. Okay. So what are preferences? Preferences is what's going to help you create your actual company file. So for example, do I have employees? Yes, I do. Do I have, uh, do I charge sales tax? Yes, you do. What products do you sell? Are you going to use inventory? All of those questions are going to be basically setting up your preferences. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. So first question you have here is what do you sell? So in this case, do you sell services only? Do you sell products only? If you do both, they have a combination of both products and services. Okay, so this is also going to help create your uh, chart of accounts, right? You're going to have one for sales and one for service. Okay. 
So in this case, that's exactly what I have, right? I sell both a product and a service, right? Because uh, as, as a photography type of company, right? I'm selling my services as me taking the photos and having a photo shoot. But I sell packages because my clients obviously want their photos. So I sell um, either cameras or I sell um, picture frames. All right, so there you go. Both a product and service. Next. Then the next question says that, do you charge sales tax? By law, in the state of whatever you do, right, there's only five states that are um, exempt to sales tax. I don't know what they are, but there are five. I know that for sure. Um, I think uh, Florida is one of them. I can't remember. But there are certain states that, set, that charge sales tax. And here in Nevada and California, because this company is California, 100% you must charge sales tax, even if you're an online business, right? So there are some ways around it that you can um, be tax exempt, right? Depending on whether you're um, a provider for another small retail company, then yes, you don't need to charge sales tax. Yeah, it could be tax exempt. Um, so in this case, right, in the state of California, we do charge sales tax. And we'll talk more in depth of what sales tax is when we, when we dive into chapter um, four and chapter two, okay? And a little bit, actually, we're going to also take a look at it in chapter seven as well, okay? So yes, I charge sales tax. Okay. Next question says here, do you want to create estimates in QuickBooks? Now, what are estimates, Okay. So estimates is another way of saying that this is like a bid or this is a quote, okay? So when you have customers that call in and just say, hey, I'm just looking, I'm just checking prices, right? That is an estimate, right? Especially when you're doing a service type of company, you definitely want to have estimates, all right, because no person is going to come in and just be like, okay, I want I want one hour photo session and find out later that they charged me $200. No. Okay, a lot of clients or a lot of um, people who shop around, that's the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to look at prices. Okay, so in this case, estimates is definitely recommended if you are going to have those potential clients that are looking for quotes or looking for bids and what they can get or for whatever amount that they want, right? And if they agree to it, then it becomes an invoice or a project, whatever you want to call it. But for this, an estimate is just a pretty much what it says. It's an estimate. It's a guesstimated amount, a recommended amount, or um, it's basically a potential sale, but it isn't. So in this case, yes, especially for my services for um, um, Imagine Photography, yes, I definitely want to have um, estimates. So then the next question here says tracking um, calendar, uh, I'm sorry, tracking customers' orders in QuickBooks. So again, yes. The question here is do you want to track sales um, orders um, okay, before you invoice your customers, okay? In this case, sales orders, right, is when customers call in advance and say, hey, I want a service to be done. They may be a previously, a, previ a previous customer of yours, right, because they know what they want from you, and they're going to call in and they're going to order. And in this case, if you have estimates, then yes, you should definitely have sales orders, right? You just definitely have the availability for customers to call in and order something from you versus someone that calls in and just kind of gives you a potential order. This one is a guaranteed order. And we'll talk more about this in chapter uh, four, in chapter 13, right? And so I say yes. All right. Next question here says, using statements in QuickBooks. Yes, if you are going to have customers, right, and you're going to bill them, 
you definitely want to use billing statements in QuickBooks. Yes. This also goes around, uh, uh, um, this also goes, um, so this is for your customers. Do you want to have statements? Yes, you definitely want to, especially when you have customers that owe you on an account, right? So um, think of it as like a credit card company, right? They always send you a statement every month to let you know, hey, this is how much you owe. This is, this is what you spent. This is the activity happens. This is your payment. This is your due date. That is the same thing here. And yes, if I'm going to be having potential sales, potential invoices, then yes, I should be able to um, have um, statements available to create. And we're going to talk about that in Chapter 3. Okay. Next question says that, do I use progress invoicing? Now, what is progress invoicing? So in this case, progress invoicing usually typically happens when a customer wants to do a huge project that requires whether a whole week long. And what progress invoicing does is that it breaks up the project into even portions or whatever it is, right? And they bill them separately for each portion of the project. So let's say one of my customers wants to do a whole week long photo shoot. Maybe it's a wedding photo shoot that needs to be required in five different locations. So then um, you can build them. You can, you can create the project as a whole week long, and then you can build them for each day of that project. That's what progress invoicing is. It's taking a huge project and you're able to divide it into um, increments and make and bill somebody like that or have them pay like that, right? And of course, if you have estimates, uh, which is what you use to create your projects, then yes, it is definitely recommended, okay? In this case, it tells you it's not recommended, uh, but no, you should definitely have uh, progress invoicing, especially if you're going to have um, the, the possibilities of having projects like that. Next. So the next thing he says here is that we're going to be looking at managing bills that you owe. Yes, 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 yes. That's the purpose of QuickBooks, right? You need to set some kind of way when you enter in your bills that you're going to be keeping track of your bills. Get set reminders so then you pay them. And that's, the, that's actually probably one of the purposes of QuickBooks is it's to help you organize your expenses and your um, income so then you can keep track of all the bills, bill payments that you need to make so you can run your business. So in this case, 100%, you definitely want to have QuickBooks keep track of your bills. Okay. Next. Tracking inventory in QuickBooks. Yes, if you're going to sell a product, then 100% yes. Now, there, of course, there's other ways that you can treat inventory as inventory or you could treat your inventory as a business expense or a business supply. Whatever you want to use it, as long as you, if you are wanting to keep track of those inventory items, then you should definitely consider it as inventory. Okay? But if you're just using it as a mere expense to the company, then no, you don't need to keep track of it as inventory. Right? And we'll take a look at this in Chapter 8, where we, did, where we look at the difference between um, inventory part and non-inventory part. Okay? And the difference is um, keeping track of them all the time or keeping track of it every so often. Okay? So in this case, um, yes. We do, I think I clicked, keep track. Oh, sorry, I, I think I clicked the button by accident. So yes, I do want to keep track of inventory, okay? This is, and this, part, this part's important because we do sell products that we want to keep track of. So I click next. So then the next thing is going to be keeping track of time. This is the best way for you to keep track of the people that work in your company. 
it could also keep track of your customers right because um if they if you are a service right you definitely want to keep track of how many hours you dedicated to this cut to this customer right another thing that you could use this for is for employees employees if you use the, tr the time tracking you can use them for them to get paid for right they can keep track of their time sheets and that's exactly what this is so yes 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 especially for services that are based on hourly basis you should definitely keep track of that okay next so here is the next question where um, it asks you, do you have employees? Now, here's a little misunderstanding in my sense, where it says that um, if you say, yes, I have employees, it gives you what kind of employees you have. A 1099 contract worker is not an employee. You don't pay anything to them. You don't owe them anything except for the money that they earned. You don't pay for their social security. You don't pay for their taxes. You don't pay for anything. So that's why it's kind of weird that they set 1099 here. But yes, you do have a 1099 worker. And yes, you do have W regular W-2 workers. So again, uh, by clicking this right here, this is also setting up. So when you do um, add your employees, which is chapter 10 and chapter 11, this section right here will pop up for you okay and next so then we have using accounts in quickbooks so of course yes we are going to be using accounts in quickbooks so this is right here is going to help us set up our chart of accounts okay so first it says give you here right what when are you going to have your start date for the act to start tracking your um, transactions. So if you guys remember, right, you never did the beginning of the year, which is the January 1st. No, and of course this is for this year. You always want to select December 31st. So in this case, December 31st of 2020, okay? So then, when you start the actual date, it's actually going to be on January 1st, okay? So in this case, that's what the book recommends, and that's what I recommend you as well. Always the last day of your last physical period. Okay. So this is your generic chart of accounts. Now, are you obligated to take the, all of these accounts? No, you don't have to take. This is a generic chart of accounts so it helps you build your chart of accounts much more easier um, than uh, you would normally okay and what I mean by that is that once we finish our, our company file right the next section I'm going to teach you was how to create your chart of accounts these chart of accounts right here are things that QuickBooks recommends you to have to create for you so you don't have to do it yourself and again, these are called the gen this is this is called the generic chart of accounts. Okay, if I didn't select any of them, then I would have nothing in my chart of accounts. But because what the generic chart of accounts does is it creates accounts based on the information that you gave the uh, QuickBooks. So throughout this whole entire interview, right, we said we sold products and services. So boom, we have sales. Okay. Um, Another thing that we said that is that we had inventory. So boom, you have inventory. Boom, um, there's advertising and uh, professional expenses. Again, um, that is subject to you. It's also based on your industry as well. Since you said that you were um, art, writing, and photography, they even put in things such as production and um, supplies, right? Because you're in art, writing, and photography. So a lot of the information, again, is tailored to create everything for you. And because QuickBooks uses the internet to be able to obtain all this information, it is only makes it that much more easier to create your actual company file. So in this case, I do have sales. Um, 
I do have some contracted services. Yes, I do. I have a 1099 worker. Um, advertising, automobile. I'm going to say no to automobile. Uh, bank service charges. Yes, that's always necessary. Computer and internet. Yes, okay, we'll have that, right? Because we, we do need to use technology. Um, and uh, as far as dues and subscriptions, no, we don't charge our customer for subscriptions. Health insurance, yes, we do have health insurance. We will provide health insurance, okay? So again, all of these are what's called generic um, chart of accounts. So um, again, if you create it, then you create it. If you don't, you don't need to select all of them. In fact, you can choose to, er to not even select any of them. So I can remove all of them if I wanted to, okay? Now in this case, I cannot create my chart of accounts using the interview. I can only select what's already potential that could be pre-made for me. But in this case, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to, uh, because that's what the next section is, is to help you create the um, actual um, chart of accounts. So in this case, I'm done here, and I am going to click next. So now it says, congratulations, you completed and successfully went through the entire um, interview, okay? And when I click on go to setup, right, now your profile or your company file is being created, right? You have your icon bar, your menu bar is at top, and right now it's pulling up your um, other things that you should add in here, as well as um, it's going to set up your um, home page, okay? So first thing it's going to say is it's going to ask you, well, you're still going to be continuing um, adding more and content to your actual company um, data. So in this case, right, it says the first thing is add the people that you um, do business with. So your vendors, your customers, your employees. This right here, we'll learn throughout the rest of this week, right? That's the first thing we're gonna learn is um, chapter four is we're gonna look at our vendors. Chapter two is our customers. And then of course, um, chapter 10 and 11, 10 is going to be where we look at employees. So in this case, we're gonna skip that section. Then the next thing is gonna be adding products and services. In this case, I will set that up in chapter eight. Okay. And then add your bank account. So in this case, I believe your book tells you to add um, your bank account. Now, of course, this is also sensible data. So you definitely don't want to leave your um, books unopened because you have um, your bank account in here. Now, of course, this is a fake bank account. It's not a real one, okay? So here we are. So um, let's see what happens when we need, we need to set up our bank account. So in this image, once again, I'm so sorry. It is so blurry, but I believe the numbers here. Um, okay, so we're gonna be setting up three bank accounts. We're going to be setting up um, the bank account, a savings account, and a, oh my, even I can't read that. So chapter 12, let's see. Bank account, bank account, bank account. So here, setting up bank account, we're going to set up bank account uh, for checking and then for savings, okay? So let's go ahead and dive right into here and select that we're going to enter in our bank account. Now, there are a lot of things that you can do with a bank account. Um, we'll talk about bank feeds in Chapter 5 and bank reconciliation in Chapter 5 where we always need to make sure that the amount of checks that we write and the amount of, you know, 
deposits that we enter in matches our bank account at all times. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and click add a bank account. So the first bank account, right, these names are what you want to choose to name your checking account. It's not going to be uh, anything that you want to put in there. You could put my bank, you could put Bank of America, you could put Chase Bank, whatever bank you want to refer to if you are using this. Now, of course, any business can have multiple bank accounts, which, you know, um, shouldn't necessarily happen. You should have one bank account, but you can have multiple credit cards. That's obviously true. In this case, we're going to be setting up our bank account, and I'm going to name this account called checking, okay? And I'm going to name this checking dash the last four digits of my actual account number, which in this case is three, four, five, and six. Okay. Oh, actually, sorry, 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 sorry. The last four. The last four digits is going to be... Actually, yes, that was right. Three, four, five, six. Okay. And um, the routing number or the account number itself says in here it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Again, this is a fake number. Obviously, you guys know bank numbers uh, or account numbers usually a lot longer than that. And it starts with two zeros. Okay. And of course, this is where the, the question is, do you want to set an open balance? Now, in this case, if I do enter an open balance here, that means I'm going to start my company off with this amount in my checking account. But in most cases, you it depends on how you want to do it. Um, in this case, um, that is something I'm going to show you um, is supposed to happen. Well, it's supposed to happen in chapter um, chapter 12 where you set up your, ba your bank account. But in this case, right, if I set my open balances, what happens is it's going to go straight into my equity account. And if that's true, then that's true. But if that's not what it's true, then go ahead and just leave it blank. So in this case, I do not have any open balances in my checking account. All right. So the next account that I have here is going to be my savings account. All right. My savings. And this is going to be account number. Let me see. So savings is account number 3478, okay? And the actual account number is going to be um, 123478, right? Once again, no account balances here. And then once I have those set up, I'm going to go ahead and click continue, now, you're going to get this window here where you need to make sure you read through it because you might sign up for something that you don't need. Now, in this case, uh, what Intuit is offering to you, or in this case, QuickBooks is offering to you, is that you can actually have um, Intuit print out checkbooks for you for you to go ahead and um, utilize um, for your business. Now, in this case, right, uh, when we talk into actually um, printing checks and stuff, so that's the cool thing about QuickBooks is that, yes, you can print checks directly from the actual um, QuickBooks itself. Now, again, uh, you have to have, obviously, the pre-made um, checks that you can print out, and you normally you could get that from your bank, okay? It's the blank checks, not, not the actual checkbook itself. It's going to be an actual blank check that you can print stuff on, right? Now, in most cases, a lot of, um, a lot of people, they outsource this. Uh, but in this case, make sure that you say, no, I am not interested. No, don't remind me. In this case, I'm going to say, no, thanks. And I'm going to go ahead and click, click um, continue, okay? So then now we're back at this window, and of course, I am done. I already added my um, my checking account, and I've already done the other two. I mean, the other two I'm going to do later on. So I'm going to go ahead and click Start Working. So then here comes my homepage, all right? And 
Um, some cases, you they will always ask you, hey, you need to register or you need to log into your account. In this case, you don't need to. So you can actually um, bypass this, okay? It should be all the way at the bottom right here. And you should be able to click uh, out on this box. In this case, I, uh, okay, hold on. I think it says, uh, let's see, Intuit account. Okay, why do you need one? Uh, let me see. I, um, okay, so it says, tell us um, what do you do in Imagine Photography? Okay, you're the admin. Yes, I am. Okay, and then, of course, you don't actually necessarily need that, and you can click. Then it says here, so you have to answer these series of questions real quick, okay? Um, email address, okay, in this case. Um, is going to be the info at imaginephoto.info, uh, okay? Next, and then last here says you should uh, enter in your credentials here. Um, you don't need to. I can sign in later. And I, there's no other button. Sign in later. Okay, there you go. So then now you have, so in this edition, because this is the accountant's edition, it gives you accountant's reminders. In this case, this is always a window that you can always ignore, okay? Um, and then of course it gives you features because if you are, since we use the easy step interview, it just gives you like a little rundown on features that you can do for QuickBooks, which I'm gonna go ahead and close. So here we are, we finally made it to our home page, right? Icon bar here and menu bar up at the top, okay? So that is the easy step interview. It was very long, a lot of questions were asked, but that is for beginner users of QuickBooks. Any questions so far? No. Um, no. Me. Yes. yes. Go ahead, Maggie. Uh, you see, you say bills and invoicing. Invoice means bill. What is uh, different? Okay, so invoicing is when you bill your customers. A regular bill is when you receive it from someone else. Yes. So again. When I, yes. When I issue issue issue, I am issue invoice. Mm -hmm. Receiver, I am this bill. You mean? Yes, 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 yes. You are the issuer of the bill. Yes, but that's only in context of if it's a customer. Yes, if you are creating an invoice, you are billing your customers. You are issuing a bill to your customers. Okay. When you are receiving a bill, you're getting it from someone else. You're receiving a bill. Because let's say you bought you bought inventory from some from a company, right? They're going to bill you and you're going to receive that bill. Okay? Where an invoice is where you're creating the, the invoice because you are billing your customer because they bought something from you on an account and you're issuing the bill. That's the difference between a bill and an um, invoice. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what happens when there are you you're progressing through your company and you decide that oh man, I don't I don't actually use inventory. I don't even sell my inventory anymore. Okay. How do I modify or fix that? You can modify and fix all that you want for all the questions that you were asked through the interview at any given time by going to your edit menu, hitting your preferences. So again, I did that really quick. You're going to go to your edit menu bar. You're going to click on preferences, which is the last item on your list here. And right here is going to give you a list of all the categories or topics that you answered. So in this case, right, when we're talking about inventory, so items and inventory, right? I need to make sure that I'm on my preferences, but I'm on the company preferences. First thing that it says right here is, is that we keep track of inventory. If I deselect that, okay, I, I click, oh, and I click okay, right? And it says, um, are you sure you want to make these changes? And I said, okay. So once I do that, right, that is going to mean that I don't have inventory anymore. So if I go ahead and check out my home page, I don't have the section for inventory anymore. So the easy step interview not only helps you create the transactions that appear on your home page, it also keeps, it also creates the profile itself, the company preferences. Like, what do you need? What do you, what do you do in the company? So if I go back to my edit menu and click preferences once again, all of these are questions that you answered through the interview, okay? So for example, sales tax. The question that they asked was, do you charge sales tax? Okay. For sales and um, customers. So in this case, right, if I click onto my company, this is where statements are here. Do I collect sales? Do I, do I, do I sell a product? Okay. So all of those are going to be set here. Payroll and employees. So the question that we answered was, do you have employees? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, and of course, et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of these things, right, um, if you're trying to um, edit or add more changes or put more preferences in here, this is how you do it. You're going to always go through the edit menu and um, click on the preferences. Now, here's the one thing you can't do. You cannot go through the interview again. Okay. So once you complete the interview, that's it. It's done. Okay. So that's also a downside is that you can't go back to the interview. But in order to answer those, re-answer those questions, you would go through your edit preferences and you would choose the topic that you answered the question to and toggle it that way. Okay. So again, this is why for this example here that going through the easy step interview helps you set up your preferences for you. Okay. Any questions here? No, uh -uh. not for me. Okay. All right. So that's just setting preferences for for you. Okay. Now the last thing I was going to talk to you about is, um, for this section here is that you can go to company as well, um, and you're able to set up users and passwords. So once you've completed your entire um, company file, right, and um, you're ready to go ahead and set your username and password, you would click this and um, you could choose to either change your password or et cetera, et cetera. So when I click on that, it's going to give me this window here where, who are you? I'm the admin, okay? And in this case, what is going to be my new password? In this case, I never set a password. And um, how I'm going to set it is going to be, um, I think it's capital A, 
B, C, D, one, two, three, four, exclamation point. Okay. Now, of course, it's going to ask you to, deter to um, enter that in again. Capital A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four, exclamation point. And you have to be, you have to have a, a capital letter, a lowercase letter, um, and a symbol in there, okay? Uh, and a number, right? The typical things because QuickBooks will not accept it if it's too weak of an answer or too weak of a password. So there you go. I created it, and I can go ahead and click continue. So that means the next time I access this file, right, I am required at every single time to always access um, this by entering a password, all right? Because, again, we have sensible data in the actual file, right? We put our tax ID number, we have our address in there, we have other information that are private, okay? All right? So that's it for there, okay? Well, we, when, uh, let's see. I'm going to show you how to, to do the easy step interview. And then um, when we come back from break, I'm going to show you how to open up a portable file. So let's go ahead and look at the example real quick. So if I go ahead and go here and click close company file, right? What normally happens is you're going to get back to this gray screen. And the first thing's going to pop up is, well, when it pops up, um, what you want to do. Do you want to open another uh, existing file or do you want to create a new company file? In this case, I'm going to show you an example real quick. So I click on this, right? So if you remember, instead of going to detailed start, I'm going to show you how to do the express start. So I click on start um, setup. Okay. And this is what you usually will get this pop-up window. This one, this window you can ignore. You don't need to register anything uh, when it comes to um, accessing this file. Oh, never mind. I have to click skip. Okay. Okay, so right here, skip for later or sign in later. Or sign in in two days. I don't know. Okay. All right. So once you get to this window, this is all the content you need. All right. So in this case, right, I'm gonna go ahead and take an example because we did a we did an in class project in um in the accounting class, right? This business name is going to be Coffee Cafe. Okay. What industry does this belong to? It is a restaurant industry. So restaurant, okay. Um, what kind of business type is it? It is definitely a sole proprietor, okay. Um, admin's email, uh, we could say Mason, Mason, actually we could do Bob at coffee, cafe.us, okay? Um, employee, employee identification number. In this case, you're not required unless you are going to um, use it for tax purposes. In this case, I'm going to skip it. Phone number, I'm going to use the school's information, so 702-853-7486. Um, okay? Um, you don't, again, you don't need a business address or anything like that, but whatever you want to use, you can use. But, um, in this case, I'm, I'm done here, okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and click on create company, okay? And that's what it does. Now, usually, it will save it into the spot that you previously saved your other company file in. So, it's, this is, this coffee cafe is going to appear in the same folder as my um, Imagine Photography, right? And as it's creating my um, profile right now, okay, and 
again, it's going to give you the same uh, window. Set up your uh, people, set up your um, items, and set up your bank account. In this case, I'm going to close this. I will not close this. I'm going to click start working. Okay. So there we have it, and that's it. So that means I have to manually put everything in here. My chart of accounts is completely blank, right? My, oh, well, actually not completely blank, but um, it's definitely, there's stuff there. Um, it's just maybe not the stuff that you want to use, okay? Because all you gave the information was you're, you are in the, in the um, restaurant industry. So here is my generic chart of accounts that was already pre-created for me, right? Pretty straightforward, simple, okay? However, what I have to do is I have to go to the edit preferences and I have to go through every single category here because if I click sales tax and I click on company, I have to set that up. So do you charge sales tax? Yes, I do, <coughs> okay? Um, do you have inventory? So inventory items. Say yes. Okay. So if do I have inventory items? Oh, actually, I actually have to set it up actually. So uh, Okay. So I go to inventory items. Uh go to company. Do you Okay. Okay, let me turn this off real quick. Um, inventory items, because I have to set up the whole thing for um, that. If I go to inventory items, do you track inventory? Yes, I do. Okay. If I go down here and I go to time, right? If I go to time, question here for the company, do you keep track of time? Yes, I do. Okay, right. so again, all of these preferences are things that you have to set up yourself. Okay, where the interview is a simple yes or no question and it helps you create your profile that way. Okay, right. so that's the difference from using the easy step interview versus the express start, right? The express start, you need to be an avid user of QuickBooks because then I know exactly what my company needs. I need this, this, and this, and this where the easy step interview or the detailed start, where you don't really know what to expect for your company or what to, how to set up your company file, then that's something that you definitely want to go through yourself and answer those questions and think about your company and answer them yourself, okay? Any questions in regards to setting up a company file? No, uh-uh. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this company file real quick. Uh, when we come back from the break, we're going to go ahead and dive right in to setting up our chart of accounts. Okay. So uh, right now it is um, 10.03. I'm going to round it to 10.05. Um, again, 15-minute break, so please be back no later than 10.20.